Um, so I, I think we have most people that w could make it tonight. We had a few people that said uh, they wouldn't be able to make it uh, at the last minute. Um, and I'm going to let Lauren handle most of this, but I will just say up front that um, first appreciate your uh, attending this meeting um, and appreciate your your willingness to to hear what we're going to talk about here. So as we move from this flat thirty four dollars, everybody plays thirty four dollars to a membership model that has member club fees and tiered individual memberships. Um, we did land on a model that works for just about every club, but there are some that fall out of it and we want to be supportive of those clubs. There's also clubs that we know operate on a slightly different schedule than, than uh, is outlined in the new model. And we want to be accommodating of those clubs as well. So um, I think most of you have read about the new membership model with the tiered memberships and then um, $5 rebates on the member club fee for each USA curling member, uh, a $750 per sheet fee for member clubs. Um, so I think you've known about that. Now, what we know is that for a few clubs, and you're among them if you're on this call, um, it's not quite apples to apples because we used to just charge everybody $34 and that was it. So it's not quite apples to apples, but in the new model, what we don't want to have clubs do or experience is in the aggregate. So the member club fee and the individual, and if everybody who's a member of the club joins USA Curling, if those two things happened in the aggregate, we don't want clubs like yours to pay more than you say, did under the old model last year. So in addition to the rebate program we have, we have what we've calling the enhanced rebate program that um, Lauren can will walk you through and and feel free to stop at any time and ask questions. So with that, I'll throw it over to Lauren. All right, so um, thanks everyone for coming and I'll go ahead and just get started unless there's any questions uh, right off the bat. So um, can everyone, is my screen sharing okay? Yeah, I think so. If you might make it just yeah. a little bit bigger, Lauren, your screen itself, the stuff. Yeah, there you go. For aging eyes like mine, there you go. Perfect. That? Yeah, great. Um, so, Dean, if you can keep an eye on the chat for me, I won't be able to see it while I'm doing this for presentation. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the just kind of rehashing a little bit what Dean said under the, the current model, everyone just pays $34 per adult member. Um, and then under the new model, the, the per member dues um, are a little bit less with $25, but now we've added the club dues, which are $750 per sheet. Um, he talked about the $5 rebate per individual member, so we won't go into that too, too much. Um, so assuming that, that a club has all adult members and 100% of those members join USA Curling, which is no longer the requirement under the new, the proposed model, um, clubs would break even under the new model at 54 members per sheet. Uh, so there are well, just, just to be clear, when we say break even, we mean end up paying about the same as you did in the past, right? Right. So yeah. Right. So that's that's where you would balance the the aggregate dues that Dean mentioned, which is the um, the club dues plus your your individual curler dues. If you add that up, um, then that comes out to the same as what you would pay under what we would we would have paid under the old model. If you have 54 members per sheet, those are about the same. Uh, if you have more than 54 members per sheet, then then the your dues are are effectively going to go down a little bit. Um, unfortunately, not all clubs uh, meet that 54 member per sheet threshold, and the discrepancy in in how that would impact individual members' dues um, if the if you roll the the club dues into the individual member dues as well, then that could increase anywhere from 50 cents to 40 dollars per member. So. Um, under the new model, we we might have some clubs that have members that would see seventy plus dollars um, in their for their individual for their for their dues or personal contributions. And that's obviously not what we want. Um, so we are we've identified a number of clubs of DI clubs. Um, this is a little bit different situation for arena clubs. If anybody knows of any arena clubs, have them reach out to us if they feel that they'll be financially impacted. Um, I'm not aware of any, but but just we we want to address them too. But but this particular plan is is focused on dedicated ice clubs. 
Um, so we want to make sure that nobody is paying more under the new model than they would have under the current model. So to address that, we've come up with the enhanced rebate program. Um, again, this is intended for clubs that that haven't met that 54 members per sheet threshold. It's um, we're proposing it as a short term solution, two to three years. That's mostly because we don't want in 10 or 15 years to be looking back at what were clubs paying in 2022, 2023. Um, so. Ideally, in a few years, we'll revisit this and make sure that we have a longer term plan for clubs that are still um, being impacted by the new model. But for, for right now, this is our plan for the next few years until the membership kind of stabilizes. We're in addition to the $5 per member rebate that clubs would see for all of their USA curling members. Um, we'll have a variable per member rebate in addition to that, that will be that will basically offset the club dues. Um, the increase that you would see under the new model for the club dues. So again, the plan is for clubs to not see an increase from their 2022-2023 dues, um, unless, and here's a caveat, unless your membership also increases. Because if your membership increased, then your 2022-2023 effective current model dues would also have increased with an increased membership. Um, does that make sense to everyone so far? Yep. I can't see any screens, so somebody tell me. Uh, yeah. OK. Um, so we have a couple of, of quick terms for this where because we need to know what to bill for or what to invoice for the club dues, because this is being applied against your club dues, um, we would need to know how many members you're reporting as of November 30th so that on when we send out the invoice for your uh, for the next membership cycle, we know how many members to um, to account for in this this rebate program. So anyone who joins after November 30th will still count towards your five dollar rebate. They'll count towards next year's dues, um, not necessarily this year's dues, but that's kind of for everyone, not just for the enhanced rebate program. But anyone who joins after November 30th won't count towards your dues this year. They won't get the enhanced. They won't. You won't get enhanced rebate. Um, on their behalf for this year. If they are still a member next year, then next year, then they would they would get the enhanced rebate, if that makes sense. So um, just to be just to be clear there, what what obviously what we're trying to do is incentivize clubs to collect member dues. You get the rebate, you'll get the enhanced rebate if you're in this group. Um, if you don't collect individual dues and members just and you you do pay a member club fee and you let your members join individually, uh, you know, we really don't have a way to tell how many members you have until November 30th of 2024. So we'd apply the rebate against next year's dues. So um, hopefully that helped explain it a little bit more. But the the November 30th date is is really for a lot of clubs expressed to us that they still wanted to just collect USA curling dues as they did in the past. So most of those clubs will elect to choose the elect to collect the $25 basic membership and have any members who want to upgrade to a premium or a competitor membership or a gold membership do that on their own through us. Now, quick point here I'll add too is we also recognize that not every club will work on a schedule that will make November 30th uh, tenable. We're happy to work with those clubs as well. We know not every club has the same schedule. November 30th does work for the vast majority of clubs, but certainly we're not going to suddenly enforce that for a club that may not, like Mapleton, may not open by November 30th. So we are, you know, uh, we will make adjustments for, for clubs that open at different times of the year. Yeah, if, if you are, if your club doesn't open until November, late November or even after, um, just go ahead and shoot me and Dean an email and we'll we'll get you set up um, with an extension for this. But But generally speaking, the November 30th deadline would be what we would need for the enhanced rebate. Um, those members would count towards your enhanced rebate for next year or for this year. Um, and as I mentioned, just reiterating, if your membership goes up, so if you had 100 members um, at in January of 2023 and your 2022, 2023 dues are based on that 100 members, um, and now this year, as of November 30th, you have 150 members, then we're going to use the 150 members um, number to calculate the cap for the and that we're going to use to get to the enhanced rebate program. Um, 
if you had 150 members under the current model, your dues would have gone up as well. So that's that's why that that membership increase also increases the cap that we're using for this. So just real quick question. Um, when do you plan to, for those that can do it before November 30th, when do you plan to, are, are, you, are, are we doing the rebate off next year's dues? Your rebate would still be on this year's dues. Um, we'll just extend the deadline for you from November 30th. We'll work with you to figure out what date works with your club. Right, or like you said, we could take it off next year's if we. Yep, you can do that as well if you say, okay, we'll that, play. That, that yep. last year of this sort of program, whatever it was, we would we still be potentially owed that year's rebate probably, right? I'm sorry, I can you say that again? Well, I, I know. Either. You see, the if, if we say we don't start till January 1st, so we're not going to make November 30th. Okay. We're not going to get our rebate until next year, correct? If well, you, we, could, we could. Sorry, to Lawrence's point, Jeff, we will. For a club like yours that doesn't really start, that doesn't start till January first, we'll do, we'll look at like a January thirtieth date for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you can realize the rebate in, during this curling season. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. That's um, cool. You know, the most clubs for for most clubs, November thirtieth works, but we certainly yeah. understand cool. that it doesn't work for every club. Right. Oh, that's fine. I, I did. I thought maybe we were going to have to wait to get our rebate off next year. So then we'd sort of be a, a year behind in the no. rebate. Well, Actually, that's an excellent idea, Jeff. Yes, you have to wait until next year for your rebate. <laughs> well, I did. No, I, didn't, well, I, I, was, and, and, I, I didn't know the logistics of, of yeah. how you were doing the rebate. So it well, made the rebate, sense. Yeah. What happens with the rebate is we really just uh, we adjust your member club fee down. Right. So. Right. Um, your individual memberships, you've yes. collected them. And then, so you essentially, if a club collects the membership, that $25 membership, you know, turns into a $20 membership for the club because it comes off the member club fees. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. So to kind of help illustrate this, I came up with a test case where we have Awesome Curling Club is a three sheet club and they have 100 members, 100 adult members. Um, I just chose adults for this because it makes the math a little bit easier, but obviously this will work if you have youth members as well. Um, so under the current model, they paid $3,400 this year. Under the new model, they would pay $4,250. Uh, that's a difference of $850 and that's not desirable. So um, you can kind of see where I've how I've broken out what their dues would be under the new model. And then for the enhanced rebate program, we would take that $850 difference between the new model and old model dues and then just divide that across their members and apply that as the enhanced rebate, which is an additional $8.50 per member. So the total rebate, which is the $5 that everyone gets, and the enhanced rebate, which is $8.50, is $13.50 per USA curling member. Is that reasonable and clear to everyone? And just so everybody knows, we realize that all of this is perhaps more complicated than, hey, everybody pays $34, right? Um, but what we're striving to get to was a model that recognized both the scale. So sheets work as a scale for member club fees generally. Um, number of sheets works to scale that. And then also to provide individual tiered memberships that reflect the fact that, you know, a once a week beer curler, you know, may not get as much out of USA curling as someone who, you know, wants to compete in club nationals. So, um, so in some ways, yes, this whole structure is more complicated and we've worked pretty hard to make it as simple as possible, but I think it's, um, preferable to having just everybody paying $34, so. And and if this description of the rebate um, seems complicated and, and maybe it is, I'm just trying to be transparent about how we're going to, um, how we're going to reach that previous year cap uh, and how that that's going to be calculated and what factors into that so that everybody understands kind of where these numbers are coming from. Um, right. And this, even this model now, as I look at it, like in our case, we have, you know, four sheets just because we've always had four sheets. 
for forever. But we could <laughs> to, we could go to three sheets. And it might make give us more room out there. It might make you know leagues maybe a little different vibe to them. But this still is going to work. Because it's our, our membership isn't going to change. It's just how many sheets we had. So that would, in essence, that would lower our enhanced membership rebate. Um, it would lower the the enhanced rebate, but because we're capping the dues based on yep. the the current model numbers, the current model um, right dues, then as long as your membership is is somewhat stable, then the the amount that you pay wouldn't change. If you go from four sheets to three sheets, but it's seven fifty a sheet. But, right, the, but I think Jeff's point is that they'd have if they went to three sheets, they knock seven fifty off the member club fee, and then they need fewer members to be fall in line with the model. So, or yeah, you know, yeah. Our, yeah, our ratio would be better. Yeah, or so we're we getting can, closer to that fifty four number. Exactly, um, which is what we want. I mean, that's ultimately what you know we want to increase membership but yeah yeah so we can look at that in the I have works, a, i'm gonna exit out of this now and i'll go over to um what i like to call my handy dandy spreadsheet um so right right now can everybody see the excel sheet now maybe make it a tiny bit bigger if you can Great. That's as big as I can go without having to scroll. Yeah, that's great. OK, so again, this is um, the example of our awesome curling club. So they have 100 members. They have zero youth members and three sheets. So here's the $3,400 that they paid under the current model. Um, and then this section is just calculating how much they would pay under the new model with their per sheet, the number of participating adults, so the number of USA curling members that they have. Um, which drives this individual column here, the $5 rebate that's applied per individual, and then your base dues, which is what we're calling the base dues is what they would have paid under the new model with no enhanced rebate. Um, the enhanced rebate, again, it is just the difference between this base due number and the $3,400 that they paid under the current model, which for this case is $850, which is the $850 per member. And their their new invoice or their invoice is three or thirty four hundred dollars, which is the same as it was last year. Um, so their their dues aren't going up. If the membership is the same, but the participation in USA Curling decreases, so if only seventy five of their hundred members decide to join USA Curling, then their their dues are still capped at thirty four hundred dollars. They're still accessing the the uh, enhanced rebate program because they their base dues would still be greater than the the thirty four hundred dollars from last year. But um, the enhanced rebate has gone down. And then if somewhere between fifty and seventy five percent of their their members, so at fifty percent, their their dues or their invoice is no longer greater than the previous year's dues. So they're no longer eligible for the enhanced rebate program. Um, so this is just kind of illustrating how how much your your membership participation will impact your um, how much of the enhanced rebate you're accessing. So you're maximizing the enhanced rebate return with the maximum number of members that of USA Curly members that your club joins. Um, so I'd like to, at this point, um, I'd like to visit Jeff's club and see how the three sheets, the, the four sheet to three sheet um, transition would look for his club. So Jeff, do you know how many members that you had last year off, off the top of your head? Eric, <coughs> Eric, was it 120? Just say 120. Okay. That's a fair number. Okay. By the way, so we've we never had... done this before. It's very exciting. So. <laughs> Okay, so with 120 members, uh, last year you paid $4,080. And again, with the enhanced rebate program, you would still pay $4,080. Your rebate, your additional rebate is $11 per member. And that's with four sheets. If you only installed three sheets, you still only, if, if all of your members join USA Curling, you still only pay $4,080. 
because well, you've kept it at whatever you paid last year, basically. Yep. That's why I'm excited that that model works just perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, Good so, work. so you can choose if you want to install three or four sheets, uh, your dues won't change under this. Now, if you have fewer, you can see though, you had a lot more room for green with four sheets. Um, so if, if only 50% of your members participated, you would still be accessing the program and it would still be capped at last year's dues. But once you go down to three sheets, because now your dues have dropped, um, your it takes fewer, it requires fewer members to, or more members to, um, to access the, the enhanced rebate. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, is there, are there any other questions about the spreadsheet that anybody wants to see? So, so Kate has a question related to dates. She says our member numbers, so your roster due November 30th, but we won't know the fees until January 30th. Not quite that great, Kate. Um, we are going to invoice you um after november 30th we're going to invoice clubs so we would expect payment within 30 days the january 31 date um that many will remember led to much consternation at the last year's members assembly um isn't really relevant anymore it's you submit your dues uh we invoice you and you pay now of course obviously you're also welcome to submit your member roster before november 30th um in which case you'd realize that rebate on your member club dues earlier but um you know so we'll invoice um one thing that that january 31st date in the past was used for to establish a member in good standing um going forward we're going to make if you're if you're a member of usa curling as an individual on june 30th you'll be considered a member in good standing and eligible to vote at the next members assembly so we're going to treat the invoice process more like a regular business going forward. Um, so, you know, we're, I'd love to say we're giving you 60 days to pay, but we will be looking for payment within 30. And of course, we're happy to take money earlier too. So, um, you know, anybody who wants to submit their roster earlier, Get their member rebate earlier um you know one of the other challenges is too if you you know we we want to make sure that someone who has paid their club um and then is say competing in events we want to make sure that they're um you know and they're counted as a usa curling member that they have if they want to go in and upgrade say to a competitor membership and we don't have a record of them as a member yet that could be problematic so um, that's another reason we push these dates forward. Um, January 31st doesn't make a ton of sense for if you look at the national championships and play down structure. So um, we don't want to create problems for people to go in and say, oh, I paid my membership to my club. I'm trying to upgrade to a competitor membership, but I'm not recognized yet. So um, yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Um, just from a, a coverage perspective, how long is last year's dues covering us through? So last year's dues will technically expire November 30th um, with this new model. And then going forward, our model is going to run no matter if you join between November or December 1 and June 30th, um, your, your membership expires uh, the following November 30th. Um, if in your first year of being a member, you join after June 30th, those memberships will roll around to the June, uh, November 30th of the following year. So in year one, you might get some extra time and then you'll be on the regular schedule. If that makes sense. Yeah, I just wanted to be thinking about, you know, if someone does go out to do some curling, like from our club. Um, True. You know, November 30th, say they go out December. That probably is the only month. Yeah, so you really maybe want to have coverage we you know i mean i'm just thinking that they should they should yeah they let me think it. about that jeff that's a good point um i'm not sure how many things 
in December they would need a USA curling yeah, membership right. for. So, but it's a good point though. And well, right, something we might need to to think about in terms of how we in this obviously the first year is going to be more challenging than it will be going yeah. forward. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if we can get through this first year, um, you know, we get on a more regular schedule. And just just so people know that the idea of having all memberships expire at the same time each year is something a lot of other national governing bodies do, like USA Hockey uses September 1. Um, so it certainly makes a lot of things simpler. The only reason we want to extend uh, that if you join after June 30th in the first year of a USA curling membership, we're thinking about people who might start at a Rock Creek that's open more than normal clubs or an arena club that curls in the summer. So if those people join then, they can join USA Curling and not suddenly have their membership expire November 30th, you know, just a couple months later. <laughs> yeah, so Sean, that is the thing with the rolling membership. Um, so once, and then once somebody's in, in, in the system and rolling, then they, the November 30th will make sense. Uh, Lauren just put a link in there for where you can identify an extension date that you might need. There's a WUFU form for that. Um, so obviously, you know, we, we understand the challenges of clubs like Copper Country and Mapleton where you have different schedules. Um, and if, you know, we want to be, you know, we want to be accommodating in those. So it's interesting in that curling we now have clubs on all kinds of different schedules from a rock creek that operates 11 months of the year to a chaska like that to you know some of our older clubs like you know that don't and and there's room for everybody i mean my club here in new jersey opens a little later than some so um we're certainly aware of that and and i guess the key message from this is look if you have that situation just communicate with us um and we'll we'll work through it well, I know we appreciate it. So thanks to you and the board and everyone else for working out a good model. I, I, you know, again, otherwise that really is a big hardship. I mean, that's a lot of money for a small club that's, you know, potentially struggling or whatever to, to come up with all that extra money. And it's makes it yeah. fair for everybody. Yeah. And it's, you know, and there are obviously some of our bigger clubs like, uh, like a broomstones that has four sheets and close to 450 members, they will just realize savings mm -hmm. through this. Um, but, you know, and, and one of the things we want to stress is that, you know, as USA curling, we want to, you know, we're optimistic that we're help will help clubs, um, you know, will be a good ally for clubs and help you grow membership and continue to work with, with individual clubs on, on their individual needs. So, I think this came up in the last board meeting. Jeff might remember this, but you know there was a consideration in the bylaw amendments where we could say, okay, if you leave USA Curling uh, and then want to come back, there's a one-time no fee reinstatement, right? So that was because in the past, as clubs have asked before, um, what about the years I wasn't a member? Do I owe back dues? And the reality is, no, nobody's going to owe dues when they weren't a member. If you if you were out of USA Curling and you want to come back, you're able to come back as a member club, as a member without without us saying, oh, you have to pay us for two seasons. Um, frankly, I think that this board and and the people at USA Curling realize that that's you know not a proposition that's gonna that's going to hold. So, what we're focused on is earning membership every year, um, and and we'll do that by providing services and programming of value. And then also do it by working with individual clubs and recognizing your own specific needs. And to your point, Dean, I think we we talked about that we need to find out why they're leaving, not when, why you know if they're coming back. It's why are you yeah. leaving? What, what do we what do we need to do better? Right. Um, you know. So, but we appreciate this enhanced model. And, and there's a reality, and Jeff knows this, and Lorna that you know not every club's going to love us every year, right? So, but we're going to try pretty hard to be loved or at least respected maybe not loved but respected so um but we understand that good job matt mogley <laughs> he's already on it heather curling club yep
Now, I don't think Mankato's on, Jeff, but would they, where would they, where would, what's their membership like? And we could look it up, but since you're on here. Yeah, uh, you know, on their five sheets, you know, that's another, yeah. it's a strange one. Uh, they've got a decent membership, although I, they, they're probably right on the border. They might have 200, I don't, I don't think they got 250. Eric, do you know by chance? The only reason I can't tell is they weren't a member last year, so I don't have a number on them, but um, we'd love to have them back. Yeah, well, let's talk about who, who should connect with them and just see. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions for Lauren? Or, um, and I, I would encourage anyone in this call, if you talk, you know, if you want to reach out to Lauren with questions, she's great at, at answering things and, um, you know, also great at spreadsheets, as you just noticed. So far better than me at spreadsheets. So, um, yeah. And also, you can always reach out to anyone on our staff, too. So, but um, for people who've worked with Jenna Bercheski or Gabby in the past, just just know that Lauren is now in the member services role. Um, Gabby and Jenna obviously still very involved in a lot of things, but uh, Jenna for focused on marketing and Gabby on national team, being the national team manager and running our merchandise site. So, so but um, yeah, um, really appreciate your time tonight, Thanks. everybody, and uh, appreciate Lauren and anybody. Any last questions? Feel free to lob them out. I'm good. All, All right. right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks, everyone. You.